Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, I'm Mario Donaguzzi, and this is Calgary's podcast on Canada's Podcast Network. Joining me today is Dwayne Hertzer, who is president of Optima Manufacturing in Calgary. Thanks, uh, Dwayne, for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for having me on today, Mario. Well, let's just start with uh, an explanation of what Optima is and what do you guys do? Okay. Uh, yeah, Optima Manufacturing was uh, founded in uh, November 1990. Um, basically what we do is so we provide uh, precision machine components, uh, assemblies and kits for a globally diverse uh, set of customers, um, particularly in the OEM uh, field, which stands for original equipment manufacturers, uh, industries that we touch on aerospace, uh, being in Alberta, energy, of course, and uh, transportation and um, process control, telecommunications, so uh, a number of diverse uh, industries. Tell me how it started. How did uh, you know uh, the genesis and roots of the company come to be? Yeah, so Optima Manufacturing, uh, there's a group of us, four of us uh, as shareholders, uh, the family uh, being the main one. Uh, my father's actually, uh, my training from Germany, a machinist. And they started a company in Calgary in the late 60s called Century Machine. And that evolved into uh, providing just machining services and then uh, evolved into an instrumentation valve line, which uh, still exists today and is part of the Emerson group of companies. And uh, so sold that in uh, the late 80s and started Optima Manufacturing with uh, two of the key associates from our previous company, Century Machine. And open our doors, like I said, in November 1990, and uh, about 3,600 square feet, and we've gone to over uh, 50,000 square feet now. Uh, currently, about uh, 55 associates. So we've you know gone through cycles. Uh, we were a lot more people, and uh, yeah. going up and down along with the economy. We're a service-based uh, company, so we have no product line of our own. So we're at the whims of uh, of the marketplace. Tell me a little bit about uh, you know who your clients are and where where are they like uh, uh, kind of geographically. Uh, geographically, actually, we have uh, being a Canadian based company, we do uh, probably ninety seven percent is export out of the country, and that's uh, divided between uh, Europe, uh, U.S., South America, Asia, and um, Middle East to some degree as well too. So okay, the customer base, uh, as I mentioned, uh, fair bit in the energy sector, um, transportation, railway in the U.S., um, process control throughout uh, North America. Mm-hmm. So uh, recently, uh, I know that uh, you announced uh, some news uh, partnership uh, with a J- uh, Japanese uh, firm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Explain what that partnership's about and the significance of it. Mm-hmm. Sure. So um, this came about through a contact that I had met about uh, five or six years ago in Invest Alberta. Uh, at the time, he was based in Alberta, Michael Couch, and uh, we were invited to attend a uh, aerospace show in uh, Santiago, Chile, called FIDE. It's one of the world's largest uh, military aerospace uh, shows mm-hmm. globally, and uh, there was a contingent about uh, about. Six or seven companies from Alberta. We had our own booth there, and uh, so that's where I got to know Invest Alberta, uh, Alberta, and uh, and uh, Michael. So from there, um, we've uh, worked on some aerospace uh, items, and it's it's a diff- very difficult industry to break into. It's uh, I find it quite political. So it's it's not like you you know cater to the energy industry and then switch over and uh, start uh, servicing those customers. So um, he introduced us to this company, Hibiki Seiki, and they had some different ideas on, uh, you know, getting a foothold into the North American market. Mm. Uh, they currently supply, I believe, uh, in Europe um, and in uh, Asia, Middle East, and they had been trying to get into uh, the North American market and uh, were having some limited success. So they were looking for a partner that's uh, in the same realm of uh, industry that they do with the uh, machining, precision machining. And uh, Michael uh, Couch from Invest Alberta, who's now based in Tokyo, 
uh, started discussions uh, between uh, ourselves and another company called Jetro, Japan Export Trade Organization. And these discussions probably started about six months ago. And we, we discussed different ideas and on how this partnership would look like and uh, came to a memorandum of understanding, um, which was just signed a few weeks ago. And, uh, and we did the press release on that. So very early stages in the relationship. But, uh, you know, we hope to, to be um, uh, mutual benefits for uh, both companies as far as opening up some uh, opportunities for us uh, within the Japanese market. Uh, we have a small foothold there right now, but uh, and the other thing, it'll uh, leverage uh, their name and whatnot into the North American aerospace uh, semiconductor industry. All right, super. So, Dwayne, tell me a little bit about being an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, and uh, what kind of things do you enjoy about uh, entrepreneurship? Oh, for myself, um, I love the uh, from the machining end and the kidding. Uh, the process. I love the processes, and uh, you know we're always under constant pressure by our customers on uh, reducing lead times and uh, getting costs down. So that always comes with uh, you know um, improving uh, you know how you make things and, and the way you go about machining parts. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the people aspect is uh, you know the key thing in our industry. A lot of times people say, you know, see the equipment and they come in and tour the facility and they say, wow, this is so automated. And, uh, you know, anybody can really go out with capital behind them and, and procure the equipment. It's how you utilize it. And that's where our, our people come in. So it's an overused term, but uh, people are our best resource. What has been the biggest challenge uh, you, you, you faced in the... Uh... I guess in the last few years, or even just uh, since uh, uh, becoming a, an entrepreneur, um, probably the biggest thing just the cycles of the markets. Uh, we try to get into different industries. That so you hope that one industry is up and the other one's down, and it, it would offset one another. But uh, with the global economic cycles, you go back to the financial crisis of two thousand and eight. Seems to have affected uh, all industries on those areas. And uh, so it, it's always a challenge with staffing and you want to, we're not, uh, we don't like to you know, reduce headcount at all. It's not our style, but uh, sometimes we've had to make difficult, difficult decisions. Um, past few years, we've uh, stayed uh, quite steady with our crew and, um, and uh, did a lot of cross training. So that's how we've uh, adapted to some of those challenges. And then uh, right now we're on a bit of a, Upturn and exploring new markets with the Hibiki, Hibiki Seiki deal. You know, being an uh, Alberta based company, um, you know, specifically Calgary, uh, what do you think some of the advantages are of uh, being based here for, uh, for any business? I think the uh, definitely the lower cost of business with taxes, uh, land, et cetera. Um, I believe that we have a good uh, talent pool of people. Mm. Um, you know, we, we, we do a lot of in-house training as well, too. But there's, there's always a, you know, a very good pool of people. And we do a lot of uh, mm. just through referral, through our existing uh, associate base that we're able to bring in people. Um, you know, logistically, it's uh, well suited uh, globally. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, Canada is not on the embargo countries, so we're able to uh, to sell that way. And uh, yeah, so it's quite happy to be here. What about the the flip side of that? Uh, you know, what are some of the challenges or, or tough things about being a, a business based in Calgary, based in Alberta? Yeah, so over the past couple of years, uh, one of the things that we've seen is a lot of consolidation on, let's say, on our raw material and yeah. the suppliers and actually uh, closing up facilities and uh, distribution centers in you know, Edmonton, Miscu, and what, and consolidating in the U.S., in the Houston area, Oklahoma. And yeah. uh, what that effectively does to us, it adds on, you know, one to two weeks on our lead time on our products and uh you know, and that's one of the uh, competitive uh, advantages that we would typically have. Um, a lot of times in our town hall meetings internally here, I'll uh, tell the associates that, uh, you know, our competitor is not really necessarily the person down in the 
foothills in Calgary or next door to us, it's Pune or Shanghai. And that's our competitor base right now. And so we've got to be lean and mean against uh, those kind of countries that we're competing against. Mm -hmm. When you look at, uh, you know, entrepreneurship and, and, you know, through your experience in it, uh, what advice would you give uh, people uh, if, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, yeah. So you had a a, a kid who uh, who's who said, "Hey, pops, I want to be an entrepreneur." Like, what would you tell them? Like, uh, what is your best advice for them? I think you have to have a passion for for the uh, industry that you're dealing in. Um, you know, you have to you have to like people. You have to be able to converse with people and uh, and challenge them and uh, you know respect them and help them to grow in your workplace that's probably one of the key things um and another one is an environment uh for ourselves uh you know i place a lot of value on the environment when i speak of that uh the environment of the workplace and the culture and then you know as you can see the building behind us that uh I always say that uh, for better or worse, you spend more of your waking day at your workplace. So why not make yeah. it an enjoyable, as enjoyable of an experience that you can? That's so so true. Which leads me into another topic area: this work-life balance. You know, it's a it's kind of a buzz uh, phrase over the last few years. Uh, more and more people talking about it. Uh, how would you describe what your work-life balance is? Uh, for Optima here, uh, of course, our work from home was pretty much uh, non-existent, except for some uh, some staff, just uh, due to the nature of our industry. That uh, yeah. and you know, I was proud to say that uh, we had uh, you know no major incidents over the past uh, few years with any uh, COVID outbreaks, and uh, we didn't really miss a day of work as far as the uh, operations go. For personally, myself. Um, you know, we have a very strong team of people here that uh, that really provide a lot of support uh, for the operations. And then uh, so not myself always getting involved in every aspect of it, uh, focusing more on probably uh, business development and relationships. So that's that's a key thing that allows me to do other things. I sit on the uh, board of um, the Grand Theatre in Calgary. Oh, yeah, and then uh, enjoy outdoor skiing a lot and things like that. What is uh, uh, what's your connection to the theater? Uh, I had been board chair previously, and uh, for about uh, ten years. And uh, originally got involved quite a few years ago through an invitation of the local architect Jeremy Sturgis. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I said, "Oh, why don't you uh, see if you enjoy sitting on this board?" And you know. It was, out here in the Northeast under my manufacturing plant. So came downtown and explored the theater world and it's uh, very rewarding. Now jogging my memory, I'm trying to uh, remember, but that's uh, that's the theater that's across the street from uh, what used to be the Calgary Herald building, but is Brookfield. Uh, Brookfield Place, that's correct, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I've been in there and uh, actually uh, knew your, uh, your CEO, I think former CEO, Tony, Tony McGrath. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gave me a, a pardon the pun. Gave me a grand tour one one day there, and uh, it's such a beautiful uh, uh, site there. It's uh, it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of history behind that as far as Calgary goes. Yeah, you bet. Uh, is it tough um, for you know being a you know the head of a company to find the time to do other things that's beyond the workplace? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I'll go back to the. Uh, aspect about uh, building a good team of people and uh, and uh, having the operations go as smooth as as possibly can yes yeah. uh, you know as we explore uh, different opportunities like this uh, Hibiki Seiki and uh, it involves travel and and time away from the workplace to develop and nurture those relationships so so that would probably be a key point on that area yeah and and as a as a manager uh how important is it to kind of step back and let let people do the work that they're hired to do, right? And you know, I you know I've worked in <laughs> workplaces where where uh, you know the boss is like right there, right? And uh, you know, what's your philosophy on that? Oh, I'd say it's evolved <laughs> <laughs> through you know 
getting uh, doing coaching and talking to people and whatnot. Be you know, I go through the we ran the whole executive team a number of years ago through a number of uh, executive coaching uh, tests and whatnot. And then you know, I think my results were that uh, too detail oriented and things like that. So yeah, I used to have my hands in every little thing, walking around. Why is this? Why is that? And <laughs> so it, it's I guess a slow learning process and. And you just learn eventually it's it's difficult to back off because uh you know you have a strong uh you know passion for the operations the aesthetics and you know from my uh father's teachings about the housekeeping that uh you know when you see things that are not in place it's it's difficult to step back and not say anything yeah yeah no that's true that's so true um, last question I had for you as you look forward, uh, you know, in terms of the, the vision uh, uh, for the company, where do you see the company going in the next uh, few years? Yeah, so I hope this uh, relationship with Hibiki Seiki is going to open us up into different markets that we're currently not as strong in. And uh, I see some continued growth in those, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, strategizing, looking ahead, going into uh, dividing the operations into different divisions in order to uh, satisfy the different markets. And that's probably the uh, best way to uh, move into these uh, different areas because they, the different markets do have different set of uh, specifications and protocols that we have to adhere to. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Dwayne, for joining us today. Well, thank you again for having me. And it's very nice meeting you. All right. Uh, that was Dwayne Hertzer, who is... President of Optimum Manufacturing based in Calgary. I'm Mario Tonaguzzi. This has been Calgary's podcast on Canada's Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us today.